the region mod of z minus z naught less than equal to r is mapped conformly onto mod w less than equal to 1 by w equal to r into z minus alpha over r square minus z minus z naught into alpha bar minus z naught bar into e the power iota lambda. This transformation we have to prove where lambda is real and alpha is the point which is transformed into the origin. Origin that is the center of mod w less than equal to 1 this. Right? And alpha is the point which is in the interior of this circle. Right? Okay. Let's start with the proof. Let's take our original transformation first. So let w equal to az plus b over cz plus d with a very important condition that ad minus bc should be non-zero. So let this be the required transformation. Second, the inverse points with respect to the unit circle mod w equal to 1 are 0 and infinity. And the corresponding or transform points in z plane are, okay, when w is equal to 0 for z equal to minus b over a. And when w equal to infinity for z equal to minus d over c. Fine. Okay. Now as 0 and infinity are the inverse points with respect to the unit circle mod w equal to 1. So consequently minus b over a and minus d over c must be the inverse points with respect to the circle mod of z minus z naught is equal to r. These are the corresponding points right for 0 and infinity. Okay. Please note over here inverse point of a with respect to the circle mod z minus c equal to r is okay here c is the center of the circle and r is the radius of the circle so the inverse point of this a with respect to the circle is c plus r square over a bar minus c bar right similarly likewise for the point z equal to alpha if suppose then the inverse point of this alpha is with respect to the circle mod of z minus z naught is equal to r is please compare this with the above note okay so here the center is z naught so writing z naught instead of c plus and capital r is the radius so writing here r square divided by a bar minus c bar a is here alpha we are taking the inverse point of this alpha right so writing this as alpha bar minus c bar that is the center is z naught again so this is z naught bar is it okay all right now because these two are the inverse point with respect to the mod z minus z naught equal to r this circle if i take one of them point to be as alpha let's say alpha is equal to minus b over a then its inverse point that is minus d over c can be written as yes if alpha is minus b over a then minus d over c can be written as the inverse point of this alpha that is this one so this is z naught plus r square over alpha bar minus z naught bar uh, let's take this negative sign to the other side And let me take this negative sign to the other side, right? And now I'm going to put the value of b over a and d over c back to the transformation one, this one. So writing w is equal to, let's take a common from the numerator and c common from the denominator. So in the numerator, we get z plus b over a and in the denominator, we get z plus d over c. So this is equal to a over c into just putting the value of b over a over here. So that is so b over a is minus alpha. So this is minus alpha divided by z plus d by c. So this is z and the value for d over c is minus of z naught minus r square over alpha bar minus z naught bar. So minus z naught minus r square over alpha bar minus z naught bar. Okay, let's simplify this more. 
just taking the uh, LCM in the denominator, we get Z minus Z naught into alpha bar minus Z naught bar, right? Minus R square. Now we have mod W equal to 1 when mod of Z minus Z naught equal to R, that is the circle in the Z plane. So I can write this as the mod of Z minus Z naught as Z minus Z naught into Z bar minus Z naught bar is equal to R square, right? So that I can put the value of R square over here, right? Okay. So for mod W equal to 1, I can write this mod W equal to 1 as 1 equal to mod W and putting the value of complete W over here. Let's take the mod of this complete W and here, right? So we get A over C, the mod of A over C into alpha bar minus Z naught bar. I have considered alpha bar minus Z naught the second factor with A over C and then the mod of Z minus alpha divided by Z minus Z naught into alpha bar minus Z naught bar minus R square. Fine. Okay. So this is equal to this is mod of A over C alpha bar minus Z naught bar and this is mod of Z minus alpha this is Z minus Z naught into alpha bar minus Z naught bar and putting the value of R square here from this. So we get Z minus Z naught into Z bar minus Z naught bar. Right? Okay. Then this is mod of A over C alpha bar minus Z naught bar. And this is Z minus alpha taking this factor common z minus z naught so we get alpha bar minus z naught bar minus z bar plus z naught bar so this will go by this and lefting up with alpha bar minus z bar right okay further this is mod of a over c alpha bar minus z naught bar and because mod of z minus alpha is always equal to mod of alpha bar minus z bar so this will go and this is 1 over z minus z naught mod and this is nothing but what is mod of z minus z naught it is just our circle this is equal to r yes because mod of z minus z naught is equal to are right these are the two reasons so i can write this as simply one over r and taking r to the other side we get r is equal to mod of a over c into alpha bar minus z naught bar which can further be written as this thing can be written as because it is in the mod so this is A over C alpha bar minus Z naught bar is equal to this R e the power iota mu, where mu is real. I have considered here mu. And now putting this value back to the transformation 2, which we get. So putting the value of A over C into alpha bar minus Z naught bar over here in this transformation. So substituting into we get so this W is equal to instead of this, I'm writing R e the power iota mu. And this is Z minus alpha divided by Z minus Z naught into alpha bar minus Z naught bar minus R square. Now because in the theorem it is asked that for the denominator we must have R square minus Z minus Z naught into alpha bar minus Z naught bar, right? But we are having these two product and then minus R square. So let's take minus 1 common from the denominator so that I can get R e the power iota mu into Z minus alpha. R square minus Z minus Z naught into alpha bar minus Z naught bar in the denominator. And writing the minus sign over here, which we have taken common from the denominator. And also it is required that there should be no negative sign in the numerator and also e the power iota mu should be e the power iota lambda, right? 
please check this so we have to prove this transformation for that we need e to the power alpha lambda and also in the denominator r square minus product of these two factors right so for that we have taken minus 1 common from the denominator and it is required to show that there should be e to the power alpha lambda but we are having e to the power alpha mu so that is why we have to put mu to be equal to as mu is real let's put mu to be equal to lambda plus pi so that we can get e to the power alpha lambda so this is equal to putting this mu to be as let me write this first and now putting mu to be as lambda plus pi right which can also be written as e to the power iota lambda into e to the power iota pi that is the property so this e to the power iota pi is nothing but minus one how by the alice formula e to the power iota pi is what this is cos of pi plus iota sine of pi and cos of pi is negative 1, sine of pi is 0, so we get e to the power alpha pi to be as minus 1. So writing here minus 1, which is cancelled out with this negative sign. And now we have got the desired transformation, which is required in the theorem. Yes, so please mark this as 3. And next, it is also asked in the theorem that z equal to alpha is transformed to the origin. Right, origin that is the center of mod w less than or equal to 1. So, which means we are talking about the interior of the circles now, right? So, again, if you consider this third transformation, if you put z equal to alpha over here, we get 0 in the numerator. That is, we get the value of w to be as 0, which means z equal to alpha is transformed into the origin. Yes? So, please look at over here these figures. This is your z plane and this is your w plane and I have considered this circle to be as mod of z minus z naught equal to r with center z naught and the radius r, right? And this is the circle mod w equal to 1. Because we are talking about now the interiors of the circles, so let me write mod of z minus z naught less than equal to r and mod of w less than equal to 1. So, uh, considering the alpha point in this circle, let this be your alpha point. Alpha can be anywhere inside. You can take any of the alpha from this circle. So, let me take this to be as the point inside the circle as z equal to alpha. So, as z equal to alpha is transformed into the origin which is shown from this third transformation. So, this alpha is transformed into the origin that is the center of mod w less than or equal to 1. So, interior of the circle is mapped into the interior of the circle in the W plane. Hence, W is equal to R into Z minus alpha e the power iota lambda divided by R square minus Z minus Z naught into alpha bar minus Z naught bar is the required transformation for this theorem which we have proved. So, this third one, right? So, this third transformation is the required transformation and as it is given that alpha can be any interior point of the circle mod z minus z naught less than or equal to r. So, the correspondence between the interiors of both the circles in the z plane and w plane is also verified, right? Okay, so this is a remark for you. The theorem can also be asked in another way. So, let's read this. There exists a unique function w equal to fz which maps mod of z minus alpha less than or equal to r conformally into mod w less than or equal to 1 and also transforms an interior point z equal to alpha into the origin and a given direction at alpha into the positive direction of the real axis in the w plane. So please take this as your remark. Okay, thank you.